I, I get why. If you were only, if somebody like said, right, these are all the people that you know, I'm gonna lock your room. Your, bi your business is only allowed to be within these people. Then yeah, you'd be smart to go, right, I need to think of a program for everyone. You don't, you need one program and you need to find a new way of getting the right people in. Yeah. Otherwise you've got a mishmash of personalities and you're doing a mishmash of tasks mm -hmm. with people. You've got two, two pitches, you've got two pillars, you've got two styles of coaching, you've got two programs. It just, it double, like your set has got to think about two different people. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it creates a load of internal friction in your business that you don't need. Yeah. Okay, where were you last three months? Five. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Four. Okay, so probably six. Pardon? No, probably more like five and a half in it on average. Yeah. Usually around that. Well, that isn't it, eight. Five. Yeah, okay. It's probably about five and a half. I might be wrong. It's true to average numbers out of my head, but close enough. Um, okay, how many clients? Uh, 26. Ooh, okay, that's heavy for five and a half. Yeah, it's taken a lot of upfront in the past. Okay, what's your price point? Um, people have been on different, but right now it's 250 for six months with a second tier option for no calls. What's the difference between the one with calls and the one without calls? So with calls is a lot of like mindset psychology, one-to-one -one coaching. Without calls is the training plan, nutrition, check-ins, accountability, but not calls every week, maybe like every couple of months if they need to touch base. Okay. Okay, different markets. I, I just offer it a second tier because sometimes people want the fitness and they're like, I'm not really that bothered about the mindset. Side Which one do you want to do? Um, mindset, but it would have to be at a higher price point. Yeah, I think so. I've only got so much time. Yeah, no, I agree. It's almost, yeah. So I think I would scrap that bottom offer. Only because it, that's kind of just the same as everyone else. It's just because sometimes people go for it and it's minimal work for like a thousand pound up front. It's more the marketing, to be honest with you. Like I wouldn't yeah. stop selling it, but like if you've got it in your head that you offer it, mm -hmm. sometimes you're going to talk about it in your marketing and then it, you might not notice it, but over time it just, it confuses your message a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I, I would stay in the mindset stuff. And if somebody then does get on it, I mean, they're not really going to get on a call. If all your marketing is about mindset, they're not going to get on a call if they're not mm -hmm. interested in the mindset. So that's when you're getting calls with people like, I'm not interested in the mindset, that shows me that your messaging is confused a little bit. Yeah. Because they shouldn't even be on a call in the first place. They shouldn't be inquiring with you. Because mm. I still get interest from people that just want to lose weight and get in shape. And they don't touch on anything to do with mindset. And then I get people that are needing like... More yeah, but what's your marketing around? Because that tells me that you're attracting two yeah. different kinds of people, which means that your marketing is doing two things. Yeah, my, my marketing is probably less about the mindset, but it just touches on it. And then the people that need that see it because they're looking for that. Yeah, but that means that you're not going to be as effective in either way. Mm. So I think you've got to go all in on one of those two. So do you want to yeah. go all in on the mindset? Yeah. Okay. So, mindset offer, what's your pillars? Um, so, you've got your training blueprint, which is your training plan. Okay. Um, nutrition, stress free nutrition, which is usually macros and a meal plan to go with that. And yeah. A bunch of recipes. Um, and then, mindset is the mindset mastery, which is like a, a bi weekly call and there's like a schedule for the topic that we'll go through on that okay. call. So, that's kind of like my method. Could you not course that? How do you mean? If they go for a specific set of calls that are the same every time, could you not turn that into a call? But I, I still need to be on the phone with them one to one, don't I? Okay, I don't, I don't know. Because it's a like a session. Oh, it's like a therapy session. Okay. Yeah. How long? How how long's the the course technically? Six, so it's six months with a bi weekly call. Um, in the second half they can sometimes drop to. One yeah. Time. So there's like a reduced. Yeah. Okay. And we we don't always we can talk about whatever's going on for them. But it's just so that we've got an idea of like the timeline they should be on. Yeah. How does it blend in with the training and nutrition? So is it is the mindset around specific things? Yeah. So like topics will be um, like it'll. I'm oh, sorry, I've got the wrong thing. So you'll go through like the first session will be about the plan, making sure they're happy with that. Um, and then the types of topics will be things like um, obstacles you've faced so far, so we can work through these. Uh, relationship with food, momentum, um, uncovering limiting beliefs and strategies to rewire them, setting boundaries, non-negotiables, um, creating sustainability, and then like a forever success plan. Okay, so, so it's, this like is that. like based around... So it is related to them becoming yeah. fit and healthy. So it's 
So it's like self sabotage yeah, and yeah. like food. I'm going to say issues just because it's a it's a broader term. Yeah, and it's like creating a new version of yourself that you can maintain in a sustainable way. So it's food and exercise issues. Um, I I would make it less and less about this, mm-hmm. only because it's not the plan that's the problem, and that's what you're going to identify in your marketing. Okay, so it's not it's not the plan. You know how to go to the gym and exercise. Some of them don't. That's the thing. That a lot of these are complete beginners. But are they not going to the gym because they're stressed because they don't go to the gym? No, they they usually feel terrible about themselves. But they're already going to the gym. Sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. Okay, th- what I'm just trying to figure out is like, I think this is such a big pillar that's different. Mm-hmm. I think you could probably break that down into components. As in like, I, I think this could be, I think nutrition is one for sure. I don't know if, I don't know, I don't know if exercise yeah, know is the best pillar. Complex. But they would still have a training plan. Right? Yeah, they would still have a training plan. I just don't know whether it's worth selling, like on the front end, especially as the first pillar, mm-hmm. like it's the first thing. I think I would probably lead with the mindset because that's the biggest lever, right? If you don't yeah. do that, they're not going to get anything. Mm-hmm. So this is like the foundational work. If you don't have the foundational work, none of the other stuff is going to work. So I would always lead with your foundational pillar first. Mm-hmm. Because really, you can give them all the f- all the stuff they want in that, but if they don't have the right mindset, they know they should follow a diet plan, but they don't because of all of these issues. So once you've kind of got to the root of the mindset stuff and you start to talk to them about that, then they already know how you're going to help them with mindset, so then you can talk to them about nutrition afterwards. Mm-hmm. Because like, okay, cool, all the problems that, that you said I've got, they're going to be taken care of with this pillar, so now I'm more open to hearing about this one. Whereas if you go from here to here, they're going to listen to the nutrition, but they're going to be creating objections in the head. And sometimes, yeah, they might they might answer them themselves in this, but you want them to be going through that pitch like we're building on the excitement. Yeah. You don't want them to be like, oh, but, you know, I've tried something like this. And then you go, look at the end. The first pillar needs to let them know why everything else that they've tried before hasn't worked. Mm-hmm. If you don't have this... This might be the same as you tried before. You might have heard of nutrition before. You might have had a nutrition plan, but this is the foundational core pillar. So the first one is always core. So that needs to be pitched first. That needs to go first, yeah. And then you've got nutrition. Because I do have like a number of clients that just want nutrition and mindset and don't want to go to the gym. I think a lot of them do. And I think realistically, it's not that big of a deal. You could just give them a training plan. Yeah. So then the next thing would be, so mindset, nutrition, probably like the support and community. Yeah. So how they're like held accountable and kept in check for the things that we've discussed. Yeah. And this is like me versus them, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So for you, it would be obviously you've got all these qualifications and so like... There's very few people that are probably qualified in both of these. So it's like coaching, but it's backed by psychology. Yeah. And, and I'm not just telling you a mindset because, mm-hmm. you know, I've read a couple of books. It's because I've actually gone through all the training for this. Like I've spent years working in this mm-hmm. field. And that, that's why I'm, you know, it's very rare to get a combination of, of both of those things. Yeah. Um, so that would be your third pillar. I think that's a much stronger offer. And it, it builds on the excitement. And then the final thing that you could do, you could add a last pillar here because this is what, um, this is something that you need to be aware of when you do something like this with these kind of people, they'll get fear of success. So that they'll already be saying, well, this is all fine while I'm working with you, but what happens when the program ends? Mm -hmm. What's my next step? I'm scared now because I don't want to start all of this and get loads of support and then end up back at square one at the end of it. So like you, I think, should have a fear of success pillar at the end. Like, and it doesn't need to be a huge bit. It seems to be like, look, this is what we do next. When you fixed all this, this is, this is what the next step is. So then, you know, after that, what we'll do is we'll go through a phase of pulling away the help step by step as you're confident to do things on your own until you don't, you know, you don't need regular sessions and then you can maybe just book in whenever you feel rather than be part of the program. Yeah, that makes sense. So this could be your front end. And this is, and this is like, A, setting up your back end program but B, it removes that fear of, well, yeah, I want to do all of this, but I'm worried about what happens if I rely on it too much. Because that's what you might get with this offer. They might think that's amazing, 
but I don't want to just be only be able to survive while I've got all this going. I don't want to do therapy forever. Yeah. So if you show them a light at the end of the tunnel, which is like, look, this is where you could be at the end and this is why it's not scary for you, that's probably one of the biggest things that you've got. Could that be like a cheaper drop down, like return kind you of You don't have to tell them what it is. Mm -hmm. This needs to be like, look, and once you're at this point, the next step for you would be X because that will allow you to Y. Okay. So that, will, you know, the next step for you would be, you know, going through a period of, I don't know, self master or whatever you want to call it. I don't know the mindset stuff. But going through a period of blah, blah, blah to do this on your own. So then you won't need to have regular sessions and you won't need to be stuck into a program forever. Yeah. And you'll be, able, and you'll be absolutely fine on your own. So that's your back end. Like that's getting them in that long term mindset. That's sustainability of yeah, this. This is like fixing and this is like. Independence. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, independence is a good word for it. So I think that will really clear up a lot of your messaging. Mm -hmm. And that will mean that all of your lead gen efforts will probably be way more focused. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah. Do you know what your steps are then for, for acquiring your customers? What, in terms of marketing? Yeah. Um, like based on what I've done up to this point. What are you doing currently? Everything's organic messaging. Okay. Where are you finding them? Um, it's like I focus a lot on Essex because I've got a lot of clients there and a lot of referrals. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mostly referral at the minute? A lot, yeah. I'd say definitely 50% referrals. Well, that's good. From in one individual or from the coming from multiple people? Like it started from one transformation picture from a girl from Essex, and then that's kind of. But it is, re but the multiple people referring. It's not one person who's driving all of the. No, because she'll okay, refer good. people, and then she'll re they'll refer. No, people that's fine. Yeah, that's all I wanted to check. Just sometimes, like you, you can you can rely on referrals, but it might be just one person that like is that yeah. kind of character because you've only got small numbers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can have an impact. Like I've worked with clients before that have referred ten people which this looks good. If your program creates lots of referrals, it's amazing. But if one person in your program is generating all the referrals, it can be kind of shaky. Because if yeah. they just decide, nah, I'll work with someone else now, and then they start referring them, yeah, your lead generation drops off. It wasn't even that she was actively trying to refer people, it's that we collabed on a post, and a people yeah. have always seen that. Oh, okay, so it's more of a partnership than it, it is like her going out. Yeah, and because she's... Got, she's very social. Yeah. She's like friends with a lot of girls that always see that picture and kind of find me through that picture. What is your referral affiliate scheme? Have you got one set up? I don't have one because I get the referral, so I don't, I, there's no reason for me to incentivize them because it's I, just getting them to collab on it that sometimes the hard work. Usually, people have like been more than happy to. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. You don't got yourself a problem that you've not got. Um, okay, so you've got the referral stream working well, which is good. Um, what's your actual acquisition? Say people don't refer for the month. What do you mean? How many people will get referred that month? No, like, is in like nobody refers. How many leads have you got coming through normally? Um, so this week I've had like four sales calls, two for next week. Is that typical or is that because it's January? It's probably been busier. I'd say potentially like two calls a week. Typically two calls a week? Yeah. What's your close rate? Um... I've not worked, I've not done an audit for a while, so I've not worked it out because I can have like really good ones like Black Friday. Yeah, you'll have some months. Yeah, yeah that's like normal. Black Friday I close like eight out of eight or something. Um, I really don't know what exactly it is. Okay, so that's probably the big highlight here is we need to track the sales process. But uh, it's always been high. Like I've never really had a problem with. Yeah. Actually, once I've we just need to it. know because we need to we need to start working on this price point and getting it up. So. For, for numbers on price point, okay, you want to be getting at least 40% close, at least 40% cash, and at least 80% of your contracts full. That's def I'm definitely doing that because I've never had anyone really leave early. This, this usually isn't a problem. This is more for like biz op offers where people are like, you'll make 10 grand in the next 30 days and then they don't. Yeah and then they can't afford the payments. Yeah, but I very rarely have people that leave a contract early unless it's for a genuine reason. What um, about your upfront versus monthly? I do, uh, most people I find will pay upfront, which has always been like, not a problem, but that's just... But it's funny, it just shows that you've got more in your price point because then yeah. you're probably ticking that and you just said that you definitely close more than you lose. So that to me would dictate you've got more in your price point. So if you're already 1500 for six, your probably next step is 1800. Mm -hmm. over a series of 10 calls and then you're probably looking at like 2-2 two, two from there and then I would go 2-2 two, two, 
probably 2-5, I might, I might even go 2-3. Three. 3-5 three, and 8 usually seems to be a decent number. Only because like you'll, you'll get friction here mm -hmm. because you've gone from under 2K to over 2K. But once you've gone over 2K, you've realistically got free run to there before it then starts becoming, you get another friction point where your sales process has just got to be that much, a little bit better. Would you have a second option for someone that gets to the end of the call and says, like, no. it sounds amazing, but I can't afford that? No, you just find more people. Because otherwise you're, you're giving this. And you, it's just not worth it. Mm. Just stick with your one programme. I think you're thinking broad. Mm. So you're thinking the people I've already got access to. It's just the people that don't really require that much work. Which you, then you don't want to be working with them because yeah. these are going to get you the best results. These are going to be the ones that give you the flagship result that you're actually... I, I get why. Mm -hmm. If you were only, if somebody like said, right, these are all the people that you know, I'm going to lock your room. Your bit, your business is only allowed to be within these people. Then yeah, you'd be smart to go, right, I need to think of everyone. a program for everyone. You don't, you need one program and you need to find a new way of getting the right people in. Yeah. Otherwise you've got a mishmash of personalities and you're doing a mishmash of tasks mm -hmm. with people. You've got two, two pitches, you've got two pillars, you've got two styles of coaching, you've got two programs. It just, it double, like your set has got to think about two different people. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it creates a load of internal friction in your business that you don't need. You have to just focus on one thing. And the next thing you need is just traffic. That's the only thing you're lacking. So ads. Yeah, realistically, that's probably the easiest form of tracking that you've got. So usually again, it's followers into DM. You, community funnel would probably be better than DM ads, to be honest, because there's, there's a whole lot of like, if you get them all in a Facebook group together and you start doing like little workshops and webinars, that kind of content would work really well for this kind of audience. So I would probably go group funnel, which is essentially, they opt into a lead magnet, they get pushed to a Facebook group, they get emailed off the back of that, and then you outreach you've got two steps and then you've got like workshops or like challenges and stuff like that and they're your main conversion points and all you need to do is drive more people in here mm, my main concern is just for a lead magnet it's hard to create a lead magnet for something that's one-to-one -one. five minute training this is why everything that you've done before hasn't worked mm -hmm. And it, and also into a group, it's like the type of people that they are. They're very kind of on their own and introverted and quite quiet, and like they're not really. You don't need them to engage. You need them yeah. to ask for these trainings, and you need them to speak to you in the DMs. You need them to register for workshops. You don't need them to be high fiving each other. That's not okay. what it means by a group. Um, you might get it. You might you might be surprised. And then could a lead, a lead magnet even be like a case study from a client? Of like it could be loads things of things. things so you, like this isn't the big thing that makes this work. This is the thing that makes this work. It's the content going into it, and and the outreach and the setters hitting all these. Mm -hmm. This 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 you'll just check, make twelve of them and test them all. You just need to find out where you're going to get these like, you know, kind of ten pound group joins from, and that's all. So you just rotate that until you get the right thing in here. Okay. And that's it, basically. And then no this has to be around mindset, because if you don't, it's not go you're not going to get mindset people in there. Yeah, fair. I think a case study would work well, like like Hannah's story and like the things that we worked on. Yeah, I think it could. Also, just a training on it. Like This is how you could do X, Y, and Z, and then you just use Hannah inside the presentation mm -hmm. to give you context. Yeah. So that would be what I'd set up next. Start here, get a few sales, validate the sales process, because at 1,500... Ten pound leads into a group funnel is going to be expensive mm -hmm. against your package. You'll be all right. So should I start going for eighteen hundred right away, three hundred a month? I would, because I think if you're going to get fifteen hundred, you might as well get eighteen hundred. I don't think you're going to get any kind of resistance at that point from that. And your cash cycle is good. The only only concern is like this is fifteen hundred. It's over six months. You might get two fifty. You know, over six. Mm -hmm. The problem is if you're spending two fifty over six, and and this costs you two fifty to acquire a customer. You're zero month one, yeah. Which you don't really want to be. And I know you collect cash properly, and you just give them the price and then tailor it down. But if if this is happening, you don't want that to happen. At least if it's at least if they do monthly and it's three hundred, at least you're in some sort of profit, month one. Yeah. You're not this Six. kind of coaching. You you never need some offers. 
like apps and stuff like that, you have to be prepared to go negative month one, maybe even month two, sometimes even month three before you're in profit. But with coaching offers, because there's inherent work involved as soon as you start, it's not like an app where you're like, cool, yeah, they can just stay for two months, it makes no fucking difference. Yeah. Like you've got to work with them and that'll stop you scaling. Okay. Um, what was I just going to ask? So I need to redo my pillars and my pitch. Yeah. Um, and just get that all really clear. Yeah, you need to go back to this and get this right first. And then build it from there. Well, that makes sense because that is actually the way it goes with most people. They just want the mindset and a bit of nutrition, and then they might consider starting training. Yeah. All good? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Sweet.